It is just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing my very good friend, Dr. Tiziano Caprera, all the way from Udine, Italy. And uh, Tiziano, I met in Phoenix, Arizona for dinner in 1999. He had me speak for his group in 2005. I can't believe that was 11 years ago. He graduated in dentistry at University of Bologna in 1987. So we graduated the same year. He has many publications on national and international dental magazines, uh, including the uh, Foreign Report, which was the precursor to Dental Town. He is a brilliant speaker at national and international seminars and courses. I, uh, I wish I spoke Italian because your YouTube videos, I can see the, uh, they just look amazing. He yeah. wrote two books, How to Manage a Dental Practice and Get Out Alive, and I Hate Dennis, But Not You, Doctor. Co-wrote with Professor Carlo Gostamaccia, Management of Dental Practice, organizes courses for college and for dental assistants about practice management and communication in the dental office. He practices dentistry in his own practice since 1987, which is the year I started mine. We're doing uh, so much the same. Associate Certified Coach of International Coach Federation, journalist with the Journalist Board of uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia, Italy. I'm sure I butchered all those names, but I just want to say, first off, that it is amazing that you can give a dental interview in another language than your native tongue, Italian. I couldn't give a one-word dental interview in Spanish, Italian, in, in another language. Uh, they always say if you only know one language, you're an American. So uh, my hat's off to you. How are you doing these days? Ah, very good. Thank you. So... um. What is the current state of dentistry like in Italy? And, and to preface this, probably 70% um, of everyone listening is an American dentist. And yeah. then 30% are in 147 other countries. So what do you think it, it's like to practice dentistry in Italy that may be different if you practiced in the UK or United States or Canada or Australia or any of those other countries? Yes. Uh, hi, Howie, and good night to everybody uh, listen. Uh, dentistry in Italy is quite different uh, from USA because here, principal, we have a uh, uh, solo practice. 80% is a solo practice and 12% uh, uh, 12, 12 is associate practice. The, the dental chain here and the corporate chain is only three five percent and are growing uh, growing very slow uh, because uh, mm, we have uh, in 2005 2008 in Hepix and um, for a uh, commercial heads and many people go to this uh, uh, corporate practice for uh, the cost uh, there are only low cost low cost practice but uh, after uh, they saw that uh, was um, it's only apparently they spare money it's a fake saving uh, because a lot of this uh, practice has gone bankrupt and so the patient remain uh, without uh, without money and without uh, without teeth no also in italy the 30 percent it's a great huge number 30% of this corporate are money laundry, you know, you know. so, so in, in Italy we saw uh, very different because we have um, solo practice, less corporate and uh, very few, also the um, practice uh, managed care, it's not so big as in America, uh, we have only 5 to 10% uh, of uh, managed care here. So uh, all uh, all the, the dentistry in Italy is uh, out of pocket, you know. So it's very different, but uh, it's uh, this kind of um, dentistry uh, make uh, the um, or grow the uh, quality of a dentistry in Italy. In Italy, I think it's a good dentistry. Uh, they, we invest uh, a lot in, in the quality dentistry because we have the possibility to do it, because we have out of pocket. I, uh, I visited last year uh, Japan, and Japan uh, all the fees are the same, and so um, I see um, a very different dentistry than here. 
you can here you can do in this align uh, good uh, crown uh, zirconia crown uh, there in, in japan you, you can't do it because it's quite different prices so i think uh, the, the out of pocket uh, and the solo practice uh, make a different dentistry here so it literally blows my mind that in tokyo paris and london the fees are set by the government and yeah. and you get 100 dollars us for a molar root canal yes, yes i mean you know nobody even in those cities believes that you can do a molar root canal for a hundred dollars why do you think italy um, had such a different system than your next door neighbor France or across the channel in England. How do, how do you think Italy avoided uh, that national government insurance setting prices? Uh, I'd, um, I don't know why, why we are in this kind of situation. Um, I don't think uh, if uh, the lobbies uh, but I, I don't know why. Uh, I don't uh, mm, uh, because I think uh, here the professional, uh, like uh, lawyer, lawyer, uh, like uh, dentist, uh, medician, uh, medics, um, are more protect. I think uh, this is my my idea. But in Japan, if you have a, um, a, all the same uh, um, fee. I saw, I visit some colleagues that uh, um, have to visit 50 to 60 patients for day. Uh, so you can do quality if you, if you have to do this kind of dentistry. So. It makes it a game of volume instead of a game of value. Yeah. Ah. Um, yes, you're so, right. So I guess that is good for the poor if they uh, don't have money, but it's not very good for the upper class if uh, somebody's decided that you're going to have to get a volume $100 root canal instead of a nice six to $800 root canal. Yeah. Um, because Italy's the home of some of the greatest cars ever made. Uh, <laughs> you know, Ferrari, um, there's yes. just, you couldn't have a Ferrari root canal in Tokyo or Paris or London. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what, what, um, yeah. I also wanted to ask you, um, we, we heard that when um, the EU started, and did that make it so that a dentist in anywhere in the EU could easily go practice in another country in the EU? Did it make the license of dentistry, you know, could someone practicing in Paris just pick up and move to Rome? Did that, um, did that, was that a game changer in Europe when Italy joined the EU? No, you can, uh, if I want, I can go to practice in Paris, in, in another country. Uh, so it's the same for the other, uh, the other country, the dentist of the other country. Um, but uh, I, we don't see uh, a great uh, movers, dentist movers, no? Uh, we don't find a lot of uh, uh, French dentists uh, or uh, German dentists here. So the same Italian dentists don't go in the other country. I think uh, the language is uh, also a great bar barrier, uh, great wall, <laughs> the, the language. Um, many dentists of um, some colleagues of mine uh, go to work in Switzerland. Switzerland is very um, high quality. Um, me too, I have a um, Switzerland degree, but um, see, I don't see a lot of mover. Um, we have uh, some dentists from the Romania, but uh, it's not um, great numbers. It, also in Italy, we have um, only a, a close number, uh, right? Close number. Uh, many many Italian um, students go to the Spain. They take a degree in the Spain and after <laughs> go to return to Italy to practice. Like, this is a great uh, number of uh, of people of dentists. When and I um, when I was um, traveling across uh, Italy over into um, yeah, I lectured in uh, three countries. Um, it was uh, Albania, Tirana, Albania, uh, Skopje, 
Um, what was it? What was the country of Skopje where Mother Teresa was born? Skopje is Serbia. Serbia. Yeah, I was in uh, Tur um, Albania, um, Skopje. Um, what was the other one? Um, I think it started with an M. Um, but anyway. Um, Bulgaria. I I, want, I noticed that um well they were, they were all the countries across the channel from um Italy and uh Macedonia okay. Albania Macedonia uh -huh. and uh, but anyway all the dental schools would all brag and advertise that their instructors were from Italy and uh -huh. I noticed when I was in Albania and Macedonia and Croatia. Yeah, Albania, Macedonia, and Croatia. When I was lecturing in all three of those countries, um, they um, held Italian dentists in the highest regard, and all the schools competing for the best students would advertise and market that their uh, instructors were Italian. Yes, um, you speak about, sorry, you speak about dental tourism, dental tourism? No, not dental tourism, dental schools, dental universities. Ah, okay. They would try to fill the top slots of the instructors with Italians, and they, they, um, they really held Italian dentists in the highest regard. Yeah. Um, I don't know very well this kind of university, so I know also that... Uh, hmm. Some of the students of Albania want uh, to return uh, to take the degree in Italy because they were uh, in the uh, University of Albania where some uh, Italian um, doctors teach. But uh, that kind of um, uh, system do doesn't work. Um, I don't know a lot about this kind of uh, teacher, Italian teacher in uh, um, you're you're in a very big country. You have sixty million people and fifty thousand dentists. What is yeah. this? What is the state of the Italian economy over here in the news in America? You know, you you hear bits and pieces. How 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 would you describe the Italian economy um, today? Huh. Um, huh. How, how's it going? Uh, not, today it's you know uh, the cries uh, it's all the world, also in Italy. In Italy, we have a, a big crisis in uh, 2008, um, also near 2013. I, you know, I, I, I do a lot of research. Every two years, I, I carry out a national survey uh, about among the patients, among the dentists. And uh, you see also um, the survey reflect uh, the crisis also, no? you see this kind of, of changing. I, so I can keep uh, the track of the situation, I want to monitor the situation with this survey, so I can, uh, I understand what think, uh, what, what the doctors think, uh, what the patient thinks. Here, uh, the tax, uh, we have a, a great tax, there are, tax are increasing, um, 50%, uh, also 60%, it's very high taxes here. Uh, so uh, the middle class uh, now, it's uh, difficult for, for them to afford um, dental health, dental care. Uh, they cut some expensive. And uh, I, with my survey, I, I want to know uh, how um, many, um, what is, what is the importance um, uh, of the cost? Uh, in a period of the crisis, how many uh, patients um, could uh, change uh, the dentist because of the cost? And uh, I saw that 60% of the patient uh, maintain his dentist, his uh, family dentist, uh, also maintain his dental behavior. Uh, and non change, they don't change the dentist because of the um, human aspect. Here it's very, very important the relations with the dentist, with the doctor, no? And, uh, but 40% uh, uh, of the people change the dental behavior in this period, but only 10% change the dentist because of the cost. The other, um, the other person, the other people who change uh, his dental behavior, change because uh, change uh, 
um, how change. They put the treatment off or delay the treatment, or they don't change the dentist, but they don't go to the dentist at all. No, uh, it's a bad, bad chance for me. Echo. Um, we, um, I, I open, uh, I. I start my own practice in 1999. Um, in which period I make a lot of crown uh, restoration. Now uh, we have to um, make more attention to prevention, and uh, I create also a group uh, of dentists about this. And and so um, I saw also um, the crisis affect uh, affect um, the, the dentist. Now here in Italy, uh, I saw the born of many uh, network, network of dentists, uh, so they can um, have the the home practice. They they begin the principal of his practice, but uh, with a network can uh, share the cost of um, practice costs, or equipment, or heads. Uh, echo. Um, but I, I saw that. Uh, about the dentist, uh, it's uh, it's um, uh, a curious thing, uh, a strange thing, because I, I I always say that the crisis it's not for everyone, it's it's not forever, uh, because I visit many dentists as a mentor, and I saw that in the same here area, the same area, there is a big successful dentist and other that. Uh, Sinking, they they have not a patient, and um, I saw that uh, there are five constant, five step to uh, to success uh, to fight the crisis, like, to fight the crisis. Yes, to exceed the the, the, the crisis, like, to surpass uh, the crisis, fight for crisis. Okay, it's. Um, it, 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 sorry for for you. Uh, our is is the, the, the answer. Do you want or? Yes, that, that was very good. I wanted to also ask you. Um, you know, different countries um, have different percentages of dentists placing implants. Some countries are very high. Like in South Korea, they have twenty thousand dentists, and three out of four place implants. America. Most of the implants are uh, placed by oral surgeons and periodontists. Of your 50,000 dentists in Italy, how many of those dentists can place regularly place implants? Would you guess? Wow. Um, uh, I think uh, 70 percent. 70 percent. Let me see. Yes. I think um, the majority of the dentists put implants. Here, there is no difference because a general dentist or oral uh, surgery, because every dentist put the implants. And um, they, um, we make some uh, survey like, with uh, our association, dentist association. The, um, the practice who make more implants are the corporate practice. Uh, they put a lot of implants because uh, they do a lot of over treatment, you know. Uh, so they put uh, many, many implants. And um, the normal dentist, solo practice dentist, put implants, but uh, not so much uh, as um, this uh, uh, corporate practice or this um, uh, business practice, so dental chains. Um, we do uh, see here in Italy. I think uh, we make a lot of we make a lot of implants. Um, for me, uh, I, I do a lot of uh, perio, perio. You know, yes, perio. And um, with uh, I, I finish an annual course with um, Tonetti uh, Cortellini. Uh, it's a very famous uh, periodontics, periodontics, periodontologist, and. Um, we uh, we saw a research that uh, if you make a perio, um, if you maintain the, the teeth uh, for the patient, it's uh, um, it's uh, cost less than take out the teeth and put in implants. Uh, so for me, it's my philosophy, and now uh, some people here think as me. To maintain the, the teeth, um, because uh, 
the problem is uh, here now um, uh, the um, per implant uh, the problem of the uh, gingivitis uh, uh, around the implants uh, so some dentists i think start uh, they go slow with implants uh, than before because they see also some problem about the implants what um the united states has nine dental specialties france has three how many specialties are there in italy for dentistry um normally um we are many general dentistry the dentist the solo practice here we have many solo practice so the dentist take a uh, whole do all uh, in many practice we have orthodont uh, orthodontics the orthodontics do um i think that uh, the majority of our practice have orthodontics uh, who collaborate and uh, orthodontic associate orthodontics and um, sometimes but it's no so um, there is very few we have endodontics endodontist um, where um, and also implantology implantologists uh, make some implants so in Italy um, we have the same um, speciality as in America but normally you can find uh, and practice who have orthodontics and um, sometimes uh, and a person or a doctor who make implants uh, and very few cases also a uh, endodontics uh, in America I saw um, there is a, a general dentist uh, have um, and um, say to the patient to go out for endodontics, some kind of endodontics, implantology. Here in Italy it's uh, different. Um, the, the majority of, um, of the office or dental uh, practice want the patient remain in, don't want uh, the patient going out. Uh, so only for orthodontics I think it's uh, normal to go out uh, to um, the, the patient. Okay. Um. You and I got out of school in 87, and I would say the, uh, the 80s and the 90s were all in dentistry was all about the explosion of dental materials, mainly yeah. tooth-colored materials going from amalgam to, to tooth-colored composites and resins and porcelain crowns. Now, from 2000 on, the revolution is in digital. Uh, so now everything's going digital. Of those 50,000 dentists in Italy, what percent of them do you think use digital x-rays or um, how is the digital revolution going in Italy? Yeah, I have, um, no, the digital is very, um, uh, many dentists follow the digital revolution here. I think 80% um, oh, uh, of the dentists here in Italy have a digital x-ray. Uh, I have uh, this X-ray. I have CAD CAM, Sirona, uh, but uh, CAD CAM now is uh, very high. Um, I, I here in Italy, I think uh, three, four percent uh, have CAD CAM, uh, Sirona. You know CAD CAM? Yes. 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 Uh, but uh, here, many dentists also have uh, Combin. Combin. The uh, Italian dentists want to invest in technology. Yes, I think because uh, so we have, uh, as I said, out of pocket, uh, so we can have also some uh, money to invest uh, for this. Also, because of the high taxation, the dentists prefer to invest uh, in uh, in uh, equipment instead of in taxes. So uh, we take a lot of digital. Uh, there is a, um, a little revolution now about uh, digital uh, here in Italy, but um, we think uh, we follow this uh, revolution. It's, um, we like this revolution. Um, different countries have different cultures and views on dentists, professional dentists, advertising. Uh, some countries like uh, Hong Kong, um, you know, they, there's no dental advertising allowed. What is the culture of Italian dentists and advertising? 
Um, is it frowned upon? Is it legal? Is it illegal? How, what, what can you do and what can you not do in advertising? Now, uh, there was a, a law, uh, Legge Bersani, the law, Bersani law, who make uh, these uh, ads uh, legal. Before this law, um, there no legal. In, uh, when I was, I, I was a president of the dental board in 1995, and <laughs> in that time, I have to call the colleague if they make the word more than eight centimeters. So it's very, uh, very hard, you know, very um, rigid. And now it's, uh, it's open. This, uh, you can do um, uh, commercial heads, but uh, um, the dentist uh, here don't see in, in a good way uh, the commercial heads. Also because um, I saw also another survey that um, and most 30% uh, also of the patient don't like uh, commercial ads. Uh, if uh, um, a patient see a dentist who make commercial ads, uh, mm, don't uh, good in a good way. Don't see in a good way. And so um, uh, I like um, professional way instead of um, uh, commercial way. I, I, I like um, communication. I, I don't call it um, heads or publicity. I call it uh, external communication. Uh, uh, I, uh, in my lecture, I speak about it and I say to the dentist, we have to do uh, external communication. It's like prevention. No, you, you have not to wait to have some problem to make uh, uh, heads. Now you have to do um, in a continuity, and um, but it's met, uh, it's better to do in a professional way than commercial uh, commercial heads uh, like flyer on the car, because I see that business uh, that the um, professional way is more effective um, and also cost less uh, than business way. Um, we do a lot of uh, I saw that. Uh, uh, networking with a medical expert, with uh, other person. Uh, to do, today I, I, I visit a great uh, medical building to know uh, the medic, uh, um, the doctor inside, a uh, networking or uh, joint venture uh, together. So I think that uh, um, our, our practice, uh, I call our practice a relational practice. Uh, we, uh, I know that we exist as a dentist uh, because of a dentist-patient relationship, and so I think I have to uh, to invest in the, rela the relationship, not only with the uh, patient, but also with the person that are around of me, uh, because also our um, our practice have uh, also an. Um, um, area of um, a ray of uh, 20 kilometers, not more, not more, only 20 kilometers. So I have to invest in the community or in the uh, doctors and others of my uh, area. Um, and so I, I can, uh, this works a lot then to put uh, heads or um, um, a flyer on the car I try also. Eh? I try everything because I I won't try everything because I I so I can speak. Uh, I prove and I speak to the, my my colleagues in the lecture. So I try uh, television heads. I try also radio heads. Uh, I try um, newspaper heads. But I I saw that uh, the heads it's more um, efficiency. Um, is the uh, networking. Networking works um, very, very well. It's more professional. Of those 50,000, how many of them have a hygienist to do the cleanings? In, in the United States, in some countries, the United States, the dentist does not do the cleaning. They have a registered dental hygienist doing the cleaning. Uh, when I first lectured in uh, Australia back in like 1990, it was a new concept. They, they were just starting um, hygiene schools for the first time. 
Um, um, what is the state of dental hygienists in Italy? How many of them, how many are there? How many of the 50,000 dentists use a hygienist to do their cleanings? No, the, here it's like America. The majority of the office have a, a hygienist. Uh, here we have a, a three years degree um, in, at the university. And, um, but uh, are very rare um, hygienists employed. All the hygienists, or the majority of the hygienists, are associate. So they, um, we pay a percentage, like 30 or 40 percent. And, um, and, but every office have a um, hygienist. I have uh, two hygienists. And um, it's, uh, I'm, we have many universities that uh, teach um, hygiene. And uh, I think it's an important figure of our office, not uh, only now, but for the future. Because for the future, is uh, the people became uh, older and need more dental treatment. Uh, the preventive, mm, the prevention uh, would be one of the important things. So the hygienist became one of the most important thing also in the dental office about the prevention. So, um, a lot of people, um, a lot, a lot of dentists will throw uh, Italy into one word of Europe. They'll just say, well, in Europe, the dentists do this, which I find very uh, misinformation because Europe is so many different countries. But I want to ask you specifically, a lot of people, um, what is the state? Some, some dentists in America say amal mercury amalgam was banned in Europe. What would you say to an American dentist listening to you right now who believes that mercury amalgam was banned in Europe and is in, in, is no longer used. What would you say to that dentist? No, no, no. In Italy, it's not banned. Uh, our government say only that you it's better not to do amalgam in a um, child of six years old, uh, not in pregnant, but uh, you can do if you want. Uh, Amalgam. I, I, I don't do amalgam mm, since uh, 1995, I think. Mm, but uh, the trend of the patient, I think it's, it's not banned, but uh, the patient don't want it. Mm, I, the patient don't like it. Uh, because, uh, you know, here um, uh, there is a great trend, the, the green trend. And um, they don't like uh, to have um, um, metals, mercury in in his uh, in their um, mouth. And uh, also, I, I um, also I create a group um, of uh, 30, 30 dentists in Italy. Uh, the name is Verdenti, um, who um, don't want to use. Uh, um, we are metal free. We don't use metal in in mouth. We don't use. Uh, we use only zirconia. Uh, we use uh, only resin. Also, the resin. We change now the resin because uh, we uh, we find the BPA free resin because we don't want to uh, make uh, mm, some toxic uh, material in uh, the mouth of the patient. So, so you want to use a resin that does not have bisphenol? Is that bisphenol, you yes, bisphenol, BPA, you know, BPA. Yeah. So, so you currently, how long have you been using composite resins that have no bis? Uh, no. Now, now we start with this. Now we start. We change um, last uh, this year. It's a, it's a new thing now. Is it? A, is, is the company Italian? Kulzer. Oh, Kulzer. Cool, sir. Where where are they from? Is that Germany? I think Germany. And and what's the name of their composite? Uh, Venus, Venus pearl, and Venus diamond. There are dentists who are holistic who say that water fluoridation was banned in Europe. What would you say to an American or an Australian dentist 
who believes that water fluoridation was banned in Europe because fluoride, fluoridation in water is toxic? No, fluoridation is not banned here. Uh, we have fluoride in our water. Uh, I, um, I use uh, some uh, products with uh, fluoride. Fluorine, with uh, fluorine, I, I use uh, some kind of products, uh, but I, it's not banned. Uh, yes, you find um, some holistic dentists uh, who don't like this, but uh, they, they take care um, with some colors, uh, with some holistic, but it's too um, far from uh, normal dental practice. A normal dental therapy. Mm, normally here we have fluorine for the, our water. Uh, we suggest we suggest also uh, fluoride toothpastes. Um, for us, it's a, it's a, a good way to restore the, um, the first cavity. Just so it's you, so Italy has, um, like say, um, 60 million people, um, basically 48,000 dentists, you know, round that off to 50,000. It's basically you have a dentist for every thousand people. Um, do you think that, um, that that's a good ratio that we only, Italy only needs one dentist for every 1,000 uh, population? Or do you think that the dental schools are in Italy are making too many dentists. Um, some countries like say, take Brazil. Brazil has created so many dentists that many uh, experts in uh, Brazil believe that half the dentists in Brazil cannot even make a living to support their family in dentistry. You're starting to see the same thing take place in India, Malaysia. What is the status of the supply and demand of dental schools and dentists in Italy? No, in Italy there is, uh, now there is too much dentist because uh, the normal ratio is one dentist, 2,000 people, not one dentist, 1,000 people. So we have uh, a lot of, a lot of dentists, um, but uh, we have, uh, I think we, 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 we are the state, we have the country with the most number uh, of uh, university, dental university. 43? Uh, 33. 33. 33? 33. 33. That, that's, that's a lot. The United States only has uh, 56. So what, what is the class size of those 33 schools? What then? How, how big is the class size? How, how many dentists do they each graduate? Uh, no, each year uh, we have a uh, um, the class it's uh, 30, 40 person. So we have uh, 900 uh, every year. Uh, but uh, um, the problem is not uh, the number of the dentists we that uh, uh, go out from the university here because uh, because for the class close number because many many students go to Spain, go in another country, in Romania, and after they take a degree in Spain, if after they return in Italy. So there, is, there isn't a close number because they, they make another <laughs> journey, another trip, no? They go to, they take a degree in Spain and after return. Uh, I, now in Italy there are too much, too much dentists. Uh, um, so many dentists, uh, not not like Brazil, but many dentists work for a low, very low, low fee. Uh, not in uh, their uh, practice, but in this dental chain. The dental chain use this uh, kind of uh, um, um, young dentist uh, to work. Uh, I think, uh, but there is mm, a. a a different also situation, I think, here in Italy. In 2025, the next eight years, 2025, I think almost 60% of the dentists could retire because we have a... Wow. Um, Does that include you? 
No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to work uh, until 80 years old. <laughs> uh, same here. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think in the, in the next uh, 10 years, uh, we saw this um, ratio became uh, quite different. Uh, I hope, uh, I think in the future, um, we saw, or we saw a, a new golden age for the industry because we have older people with um, more dental um, problems, less dentists, and so could be a new golden age. <laughs> or uh, we have a lot of dentists who have to back to work, so very old dentists who have to return to work because they have no money to live. Or I think this is the worst uh, situation, uh, the risk of creating the blood subject, like I don't know, in America is, there is a dental therapist, some strange figure between hygienists, between dentists, that the great uh, dental chain could use uh, to, to work in his uh, st structures, in his practice. So, um when you and I got out of school in 1987, America, United States, um, do, do you guys call, um, it, do, do you refer to this as the United States or America? What do you usually call this country? Pardon? What, what, do, what do you call my country? Do you call it United States or do you call it America? Um, usually America. Yeah, America. Um, I've noticed that's what most people call it. When I got out of school in 1987, there were 15,000 dental laboratories. Now, 30 years later, there's only half that many. What is wow. the state of dental laboratories in Italy? Have you seen the numbers of labs going down in Italy, like in, the, in America? Or what, what is the state of the dental laboratories? No, yes, I don't know exactly the number, but the number uh, of the uh, dental laboratory became, um, the dental laboratories became few. Uh, the number decreased uh, because, uh, for the crisis, uh, because, because the, the people don't do um, work with a high cost, like prosthesis, um, because of prevention, because uh, no, the prevention, we need less uh, uh, crown, and, uh, and also because uh, for the digital, because uh, uh, many dentists have, uh, some dentists have a uh, uh, digital dentistry, and they use a lot. They make a, a lot of dentistry with uh, uh, the use of CAD CAM, uh, Sirona, or other instrument. Um, I think, um, but uh, I think remain uh, um, the, the best, I think. The best uh, laboratory remain. Uh, change the way of uh, works, but they remain. Uh, my laboratory uh, change. They do. They have a scanner for zirconia, uh, and uh, also one of my laboratory have a scanner with zirconia. Another have a scanner sent to a, um, a digital center, and after make uh, ceramic. So they change the way of work but uh, the, the best of the laboratory remain. The, the laboratory don't work very well. Uh, they change, they close, they close very well. So when I was in Shenzhen, China, I went to a modern dental laboratory, which is the largest dental lab in China. And I saw, um, it seemed like half the cases were from Europe, um, Germany, Switzerland, Italy. Do you think a lot of dentists, do you think a lot of Italian dental labs have lost a lot of business because Italian dentists are sending their cases to China for a lower cost? No, no, I don't, no, don't think at all. Some of the low cost uh, uh, dental chain, um, maybe some of the uh, dental chain, low cost. Uh, uh, high hair um, use for a period with a uh, kind of product. But uh, we received a lot of um, publicity about um, uh, China laboratory, but uh, we don't use it. 
it's uh, it's uh, because I mm, there is a um, also a legal problem here. Um, you have uh, mm, when you receive the the work of a laboratory, we have uh, a sort of declaration. Declaration is right. Um, where the laboratory have to write uh, what the material use, uh, how they work. The China don't have this kind of declaration. So if you put uh, this kind of work in a month of the patient, uh, you don't have European declaration. You you can't uh, do it. Uh, you have um, there is high mm, penalty if you do it, and so. I don't think uh, you have to do mm, in illegal way, not in legal way. Um, you are, in my opinion, the number one expert in Italy on practice management for dentists in Italy. Uh, you've lectured extensively. Um, what do you tell your colleagues uh, to try to improve their business so that they're more successful? What, what is the theme of your message? Ah, okay. My suggestion to the patient, to my colleagues, sorry. My suggestion to the colleagues, um, oh, I, in um, my last, uh, um, my last lecture, uh, the name of my last lecture is how to manage the practice as a professional in a world of a businessman. <laughs> so, because, uh, and uh, I, um, I suggest uh, five successful steps. The first step is external uh, communication. External communication, as we said before, but in professional way, create, or, uh, create with a creation of a good network with the doctors, with the other person in our area. The second uh, successful step is improve communication skills. Uh, improve a human relationship. Like, as we said, I, I really, I really convinced that we exist as a dentist, thanks to the dentist patient relationship. Otherwise, dental chain will be su 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 uh, sufficient. No, uh, this is our strong, uh, strongest point. Uh, the, the third step is um, don't be your, no, as uh, a <laughs> I learned this in America, in USA. Uh, dentists don't be your own worst enemy, no? Because sometimes uh, the dentist, also in Italy, it's afraid to promote. It's afraid of promoting the right way his service um, for, for the fear of a rejection, for the fear of refusal. So, um, in this way, uh, the, the dentist became the first actor of his own crisis, house crisis. I think we have to learn uh, the right um, way of, um, to promote, uh, to present our treatment, um, like you teach also, no? <laughs> you speak about uh, our... Uh, and um, the, the fourth um, step is uh, uh, it's very, very important now, especially in this period, is the, the treasury in the garden. The treasury in the garden, um, with these uh, words, I mean uh, the power of uh, uh, recall, the power of prevention. Uh, we have, don't leave at all, as you say, the, don't leave the patient from the back door, no? Um, I, I always consider my patient like in life therapy. The patient is in life therapy because our um, the problem with the mouth is a life therapy. So I consider my patient life therapy. I want the patient to remain in uh, in lifetime in, in my practice. And 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 the last uh, um, the last uh, step is uh, cost management and uh, analysis a uh, cost analysis. Uh, I think also in the future we have to improve to control our cost. And uh, also, also make a cost analysis. I, I like always. I read your book, uh, um, Howard, uh, and I remember always, always uh, what, what you say. Your father, your father say 
one high you know, <laughs> to the cost, one high to the patient. Uh, it's right, it's true. Uh, and uh, I like it's It's a very, very important this, uh, in our... Um, in which, our which, which book of, of mine are you talking about? Are you talking about the one back in the day, 20 years ago, or the new one? I, I read the, the old one, Customer, uh, Consumerist Roadmap. The, okay, that was the th second one. The, the first one was the business dentistry. The second uh, one was a consumerist roadmap. The third uh, one was uncomplicate business. Now I, I'm uh, reading uncomplicate. It's a very, very good book. By uh, the I way, said, by the way, if you want to uh, translate that to Italian and uh, sell it to the 50,000 dentists, it's all yours. <laughs> ah, we can, yes. Yeah, it's all yours. You don't have to give me a penny. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so if you want, if you want to do that. But yeah, my dad used to always say that uh, um, keep one eye on the customer and keep yeah. one eye on cost, that God gave you a, a brain, and your brain was to drive down cost so that your customers have the freedom to afford your services. And, yeah. when you, and when you don't drive down cost, people lose their teeth, and girls cry, and they feel embarrassed, and, and their life is less happy because yes. they couldn't afford our services because they were too expensive. Speaking of uh, God or religion, <laughs> you're never supposed to talk about uh, religion or sex or politics, but uh, yeah. your, your new pope is really a rock star, Pope France. I mean, you've had 266 yeah. popes in Italy. Um, 217 mm. were from Italy, 16 from France, 15 from Greece, 8 German, 6 Syrian, oh. 3 African, 2 Portuguese, 2 Spain, two Israelis, one England, one Netherlands, one Poland, but this is your first Pope from the Americas. Uh, he was from Buenos oh. Aires, Argentina, and my God, the media loves that guy. He seems, I think he's the most famous Pope I've seen in my 54 years. What, what do you think of this Pope Francis? Well, you were really informed about uh, <laughs> the Pope. Uh, well, my, my, yeah, two oldest, no. my two oldest sisters... Uh, were Catholic, or be, went straight into the Catholic nunnery out of high school. So I hear more stuff about uh, popes and the Catholic Church than I'd ever imagine. But what, 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 do you, what do you think of this new Pope Francis? Oh, yes, yeah, so we, like, we like some, um, some words he, he said. Uh, some people um, uh, say that it's... Um, go far from Jesus, go a little far from Jesus, a little uh, near to the media, no? yes, to the people. So some people say so, but uh, many words they say about uh, the poverty, uh, uh, about uh, the way of living, it's, uh, yes, uh, good, good words, yes. But um, some people say it's, it's Little go far from uh, Eucharist, Eucharist and, uh, and Jesus. Uh, there is a lot of religion. It's uh, everybody see uh, as how is home, no own. Oh and, uh, yeah, religion, and, uh, religion, oh. and politics. You're never going to get anyone to agree. <laughs> so my last question, um, and I, I know you're not supposed to talk about religion, sex, politics, violence, but we have to ask. Um, Americans are always Americans are always wondering if the EU will stay together. You know, they they always talk about that because um, you know England, the United Kingdom left Brexit, um, and there were financial issues with Greece. But I guess Americans, especially if you have money in bonds or stocks, yeah, you're always you're always wondering about the euro and the EU. So you're, um, we're the same age. Do you think in 10 years from now or 20 years from now, the EU will still be all together like it is? Or do you see cracks in the wall and think it's... Uh, uh, Sorry, but Farah, this is a record answer uh, question or not? For the record, this is a question or only me to me? No, no on, the, on the record. But, but, um, you, but you don't okay. have to answer. If you, if you just want to no. say... No, uh, no, I say, no, I say it's um, uh, here in Euro Europe, um, many, many people, um, the majority, I think now, of the people don't like Europe. Uh, they like uh, the countries, uh, the national countries, because uh, 
nobody, but nobody asked to the people, do you want Europe? Nobody asked us, uh, to, to, to us. And uh, so we, we feel the Europe as a group, elite, an elite, a group of people, bureaucracy, that uh, lobby, that decide on the skin of the people. Uh, so mm, here the nation, uh, nationalism uh, grow here because uh, they don't ask, uh, they decide for the others, but they ask the others what they want. Uh, in the future, um, in, in 2010, <laughs> sincerely, I want to go to New Zealand, but my family don't want, <laughs> so I have to remain here. And, um, and I think, uh, you know, Brexit, Brexit is uh, change, uh, and I think in um, the future could uh, break some, some countries can change because uh, I, everybody, there is a project on, under the eyes of everybody. We want to put, uh, we want to create um, a great problem or revolution here because we take a lot of people from Africa. Our, uh, our Navy go in Tunisia and take the, the people here and, uh, but uh, in Europe don't have, uh, don't have the organization to maintain all these people. So I think uh, in the next year there will be some problem. Um, about the economy, uh, the economy, the people have a great capacity to grow here, very great capacity. But the um, bureaucracy, the taxes, take them down. Uh, there is no politics for the family. Mm, if they don't want the family grow. So it's very strange. It's like some people, some person, one person want to Europe don't grow. Like, uh, this is the, the, the feeling uh, the people feel. So, so um, who do you think will be the next country to pull out of the EU? Brexit was first. Who do you think will be next? Oh. Um, you know, France, I think. France, uh, if uh, win, um, if win, uh, what's the name oh, uh, of the left party? You know Le Pen? Uh, the left party of uh, the France, if uh, win, um, he could do the. Ah, no, it's one, uh, one problem now is the Austria. Osterreich, you know Austria, Austria. Yes. 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 I think in this um, now in a little month uh, they have to vote. I think uh, changes some many things in Austria. Also France, if a wing the left party um, can change a lot. Um, so you wanted, you wanted to go to New Zealand? No, I I, I wanted. And why did you pick New Zealand? Out of all the countries on earth, why did you pick New Zealand? New Zealand, Australia. We, mm, I want to go with um, on on December. I think uh, New Zealand, Australia, it's a very um, safe country. Also, very right. safe. Absolutely. Country. Auckland it's, is the most beautiful city on earth. It really is. My yeah. brother moved to Australia. Wow. Uh, Sydney, Australia. You know, but you know, you know what I who you remind me of the most. Beg your pardon. Do you know who you Tiziana Caprera? Do you know who you remind me of the most? You're Italian, and you you remind me of Marco Polo, another yeah. Italian. I mean, uh, Marco Polo traveled further than anyone in that whole time period. And you, um, your intellectual curiosity, I mean, you've gone to America, Japan, I mean, you've just traveled the world yes. with your dental intellectual curiosity, and that's why you're a legend uh, in Italy, that's why you're a legend in my mind, I think you're, how many countries have you been to? Hey, many in, uh, in uh, many states in the um, United States. I have many states uh, in California and uh, 
Phoenix in Texas and Boston and Charlotte, New York and uh, many, many um, Japan. Dallas. Japan. Here in America, Japan, uh, all over Europe and... Um, you've actually, I bet you, you've traveled 10 times further than Marco Polo. Maybe a hundred <laughs> times further than Marco Polo. And I, I think, um, I always tell young kids that, you know, going to the university and getting a degree, that, that's good, but it's really just reading books. But I, yeah. I still think the greatest education you can get is to get out of your country and go see the world because it really makes you understand your own tribe so much better when you see people living in other tribes and they're all trying to do the same thing. They're all trying to eat and drink and fix their teeth and live in a house. And everybody on earth is the exact same human, but their different customs and cultures um, produce different outcomes. And the only way you can really see that is traveling the world. I'll never forget when um, one of the uh, richest patients I have, who's the CEO of a huge, huge company uh, here in Arizona, and I said, why you? How, how did you get so smart? I mean, how, what, what do you think it was? Do you think you were born that way? Did you read a lot? And you know what he said to me? He said, my mom and dad, uh, my dad was in the military. And my whole childhood, every two years, me and my brother had to move to a different country. And so our whole childhood, we kept wondering, well, why is this country poor and the last one rich? And why is this country different? And he said, by living in a different country every two years, from yeah. birth to 20, he finally figured out all economics. And, and by the time, he said by the time him and his brother were 16, 17 years old, they just totally could understand. And that, that's Peter, uh, the greatest Russian, Peter the Great, traveled all of Europe. Marco Polo made it all the way to uh, Mongolia yeah. and back out of Venice. And I think one of the reasons uh, you and I are so um, aware of what's going on is because we've traveled so many miles and met with dentists in so many cities, so many countries. And I want to thank you so much. Ryan, let's call this one Lessons from Italy with Tiziana Caprera. Um, thank you so much for our long friendship. Uh, I love you to death. I think you're a, an amazing man. And I can't wait to uh, see you again in Italy. And I got to tell one story about Venice. Um, so many Americans... Uh, think that they have great Italian food in America. Uh, but if you're an American, you realize that the Mexican food here does not taste anything like it does in Mexico. And I thought the greatest Italian food I ever ate in my life was in Venice. I mean, it was just at a different level. I mean, it was crazy good. And I took my son Eric with me, and he still talks about Venice all the time. He loved that trip. But thank you, um, Tiziana Caprera, for all that you've done uh, for dentistry, for all the dentists of Italy, for uh, all your world travels. And uh, thank you so much for staying up. What time is it now there? Now it's 8 p.m. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. You, you're right uh, about the journey you speak uh, before. In fact, one of my first trips was to your office, and uh, it's really, you opened my mind. <laughs> it's, it's the first uh, person who opened in my mind, and I change, and after I start to trip to other office, but you are the first, uh, yes. <laughs> ah, <laughs> that's a... Uh, Thank you to you. And, and I hope you translate that book. Um, translate that book, uh, or one thing you can do is you could just read the book on Skype, because audiobooks sell faster than print books. So you could uh, just start a YouTube or start a Skype and read my Uncomplicate Business yeah. uh, in Italian. And uh, especially the younger kids, they like to listen to audiobooks on their smartphone. Uh, they don't like to sit in a chair and flip through pages. But uh, again, thank you for all that you've done. Thank you so much. One thing only. Uh, if you want some of my think, I, take, I translate my books. And I put it on, uh, online. And my book says uh, how to manage a dental practice and get out alive. Uh, the, dentist, the dentist between practice and life. Uh, if you can, uh, you can find uh, Amazon or online if you want it. Now, would they find that at www.tizianacoprera.com? 
That was my site, but uh, you find uh, the translation, I think, uh, on the uh, online, if you want, of Amazon or other... other on uh, Amazon? Yes, yes, Amazon, Amazon, yes, or other site of the books. So, uh, so Ryan, can you uh, uh, find the links to his books on Amazon, and we'll put that in the notes? Okay, well, thank you very much, Tiziana. Thank you, you, uh, Howard, and thank you for everyone. Um, if you want to uh, come in Italy, uh, you can call me. <laughs> and you're in Udine, Italy. Where is that? Um, where is Udine, Italy, and, and as opposed to uh, where is that from Rome? If you flew to Rome, where would Udine be? Uh, ah, Udine. Udine is uh, from Ro Rome. Uh, from Rome, it's. Um, Mm, six hour by car, mm, I which, think. Which direction? Uh, uh, six uh, weeks. Which direction? Is that north, south? Or north, north, north. North. We are near near uh, Slovenia and near Austria. Oh, okay. North, and do, north. You, do you call Rome Roma? Venice. Yes. You, you 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 pronounce it Roma, right? Roma, Roma, Roma. Yes. Roma. O only Americans call it Rome. Roma, <laughs> but I near. <laughs> Uh, near Venezia, uh, near Venezia. Venezia, yeah. Near Venice, near Venice, near Venice. And I'll tell you, you could spend a month in Rome, in Roma, yeah. and never see every museum. Every, I mean, it's. I mean, that goes all the way back to the Roman Empire. I mean, that. You, I mean, that is amazing. That that city is basically what two thousand years old. Roma was the first city on Earth to reach one million people. Yeah. I mean, that's just what a, an incredible city that is. I mean, that, that's got to be the neatest city on earth. Do you, have you ever found a city n more neat than Roma? Yeah, no, no, no. No, no, it's very... In fact, uh, I go the next... Uh, at the end of the month, I go to Roma to take a lecture. No, it's a very, it's a very, very interesting city. Oh, my God. I, I, I could live there the rest of my life. It's that yeah. cool. It is that cool. Okay, well, thank you very much.